So we're going to create an iPhone app that talks to Particle Mesh. First thing you want to do, we're going to scroll down and get the links to the code right here. I'm going to clone it, so I'm going to highlight this guy. Clone it right to the desktop. Get clone. Boom. This is cloning the firmware from uh, the GitHub repo to the desktop. And now I'm going to grab the, uh, the app example code as well and throw that on the desktop too. This example is pretty straightforward. You don't have to do any work. All you have to do is just load the firmware to a particle mesh device. In this case, I'm using a Xenon. And for the app, all you have to do is load it in Xcode and put it on your phone or your iPad. So we're going to scroll on down. I'm actually going to open the example in, uh, par in Particle Workbench, which is just uh, visual code. Uh, let's see if I can find it here. Particle, blah, blah, blah. So why don't we just drag this whole directory right into visual code. All right, we're Particle Workbench, perfect. And I'm just gonna close all this stuff. One thing you might have to do, especially on a new installation, is make sure that Particle Workbench is installed. So if you go down here to the little block icons, you can search for Particle. And then um, you'll see the option for Workbench 1.5 or if you're looking at this later, it might be newer. So 1.6, 1.7. All you have to do is just click that install button. Um, and in my case, it's already installed. You don't have to do anything extra if it's already installed on your end. Uh, we're going to open up the source here. One thing that will happen here is this is a new installation. I need to make sure that we're uh, that I'm using 1.3. Anything above 1.3 will has Bluetooth capability, so it's actually going to download the tool chain. Um, once that's ready, then we're basically ready to program it and compi or compile and program it right to the board. I'm going to open up a terminal while we're at it because I'll need that momentarily. Uh, if your board does not have device OS 1.3 installed, then you'll need to do that. So we can go back to the web here. We go github.com, particle, IoT, and I think it's device OS, yep. And we'll go to the release section. Uh, this is where they keep all the releases for all the versions of firmware that they come out with. It's particularly great because you can download the system part that corresponds to the version that you want. So we're going to be looking for 1.3 uh, RC1. Yep, this is the one. Now if we go down to the bottom here, you see assets. And then if you go to, we're, I'm going to download the one for Xenon. So I'm going to download the system part 1.3.0-RC1.bin. Um, we'll Give that a download. I'm going to just drag it to the desktop just so we can kind of see it. And then what I want to do is I want to load that to the attached uh, particle board right here. So what I want to do is I want to get it into DFU mode. Here's a neat little trick. You can actually get it into DFU mode um, using this handy little command. USB modem. So it, your device might be called something else. These numbers do change. So keep that in mind. I'm using the tab complete to complete it. If you're on PC, you just have to check your uh, device manager to see which COM port it's using. Um, easiest way to do that is plug it in, see if there's a difference, see what COM port shows up, unplug it, see what COM port dis disappears. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set the baud rate to 14.4. This is like the special command, special baud rate for this particular bootloader, which forces it into DFU mode. So if I press this, you'll see that it's gone into the blinking yellow DFU mode. Then for programming the system part, I'm just going to do particle flash USB. Uh, so on this setup, looks like I do not have particle command line set up. So let's go install that. Do, 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 
de nouveau. Okay. There we go. So, easiest way to install, let's do that, let's do it. So if you go to, if you, in my case, I didn't have the command line installed on this particular user or on this machine, so I have to do that right now. So if you go to docsparticle.io, tutorials, developer tools, CLI, um, you can copy this, this guy right here. You will install particle, awesome, looks like it's the here. Oh, hold on. Nice. All right. Let's try flashing that system part again. Particle flash USB. Boom. Now, the LED, if you look at it, it's actually changed the cadence or how fast it's been, how, it, how fast it's flashing. Um, that means it is loading. Um, you can't see much progress here on the terminal, but eventually once it is done, it'll show that it's done on the terminal and then the LED will actually start blinking faster like it is right now. Uh, then I bet you everything is installed here. It looks like we're good. We're at 1.3. I'm going to change this to Xenon. And then let's try to flash it. So I'm going to hit, oops. I'm gonna get hit Command Shift P for particle, and I'm gonna flash application local. This will do a compile and a flash. So that will kick off. This might take a minute or two. So I'm gonna let it chunk along. Um, in the meantime, we can open Xcode and get that running on the phone. So why don't we do that? And open up this Xcode project here. I'll minimize this for now. We know it's programming, but to save time and you guys don't have to watch it compile, we can get everything else ready. So what you want to do is open this guy up. You might have to do some funny business with registering. I don't know if it's set up here. So let's see if I can actually run it on my phone. Um, this one thing I pointed out in the troubleshooting, troubleshooting section uh, that you have to add an account in order to actually load anything to an actual piece of hardware. So let me see if this will work. Nope. So why don't we log in here. If you don't have an Apple, Apple ID, you can create one. Um, if you go down here and do the add account, uh, you can do that there. Um, obviously, if you already have Xcode set up, most likely you've already done this step. Now I just need to remember what my password is. Well, I'm going to have to pause the video and figure out what my password is, and then I'll be right back to log in, and then we can get this loaded onto the phone. All right, after playing the password game here, it looks like I'm logged in. Now I'm just going to go back to Xcode or video code here and make sure things have been programmed. Looks like it's successfully flashed. Looks like it's trying to connect to the mesh network in here, but it's not quite doing it. Let me give it a restart and see if that fixes it. Otherwise, the one thing that we can do is we can put it into, if you look here in the code, you can put it into manual mode. Um, that way you don't even have to connect to a mesh network. Actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that now. So we'll rerun that handy TTY command. Dun, 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 dun. Where is it? Mm. All right, let's send that. I'll just do another little flash. That way we can bypass any of the mesh stuff. The, the mesh stuff, especially in automatic mode, will prevent you from doing anything else, if, especially if you don't have a network to connect to. So looks like we're working here. And then I'm just gonna run back over here. Uh, once I've signed in, it's actually changed the team to me. Um, you might have to do that yourself. 
also you might run into a problem with the bundle identifier I put some instructions in the uh, troubleshooting shooting section to talk about this. Uh, the biggest thing you can do here is just change the, you know, change this to your name, um, or just uh, like add some numbers on the end of this. Uh, I'm just going to leave it alone for now because it looks like it's just going to work. Uh, now I'm just hitting Command R to run, and my phone is the target. Now if you haven't set it already, you can actually. Set the target here. Um, looks like it wants my password. Build successful. Now it's going to try to run it on my phone. Phone is on and unlocked. Make sure your phone is unlocked. All right, and it's launching. So far, so good. It actually just connected as well. You can see um, down here in the debug menu. If you don't have it, you can just click that button. Uh, you can see that. Central is good. We're going to be scanning for a device that has this UUID for service. Um, it's found my my board which, with the uh, with the particle firmware on it um, that we just loaded. We, have, we found everything, all the services. We are in good shape. So technically, I should be able to turn on the red LED, and it should turn on. You can see I've kind of put it, log output of what the actual value is that we're sending over um, for this purpose of this app, this we're not going to be sending over any of the floating point numbers, so it's only integer digits. That's the, what the um, firmware is looking for, so uh, RGB. Cool. You can do multiple at the same time. So I hope you found this example useful. It's a great starting point if you want to start developing something Bluetooth enabled on um, the Particle platform. Uh, I think the particle platform is super powerful. You can you can build it. You can build things really fast. Enjoy using this code. Uh, I hope you found it useful. And uh, if you want to learn more, I am writing a ultimate guide on particle mesh. You can check it out on my website. I'll include a link to it in the uh, description box and also on the Hackster post that uh, this is located on. So hope you've enjoyed this and um, see you in the next one.